Snake Valley. I thought we were supposed to pass through Almogordo. Ah, uh, who cares? As long as we get home before next year. Preston. Yes, Captain? Call these officers. Tell them I want to see them over there. Yes, sir. This won't take long, so listen to me. The ones whose names I read are to report to Captain Oakes. Lieutenant Rudy West. Lieutenant Jack Fowley. Second Lieutenant Roy Johnson. What's he want? I don't know. Maybe he's given a party. Lieutenant Jerry Strayed. Captain Oakes. Yes, Mr. Younger. I've done my part of the job. Now it's up to you. Right. And here's your bonus. favorite speech on his battle wounds. Wait and see. Oh, that again. Nobody move. Just put up your hands.
No. You haven't got it yet. Your reflexes need a little sharpening. I don't want you to give up. You've got what it takes. See? Try another ten times. You'll have it. Mm -hmm. Try the second position. If they don't watch out, somebody's going to get hit. Take it easy. All right, now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, ladies. Oh, my. Oh, my, she says. Are you ready? <laughs> like this. Draw. Not bad. What can I do for you, ma'am? I want to learn to shoot. May I ask the reason why? I want to kill my husband. But I want to do it with style. An excellent idea. Hey, Sammy. Let's have a 27 for the lady. Yes, sir. My assistant, if you'll step that way, we'll give you your first lesson. Improving. <laughs> nice work. Hmm. -mm. That's all wrong. Here, let me show you. Tankerton, you old son of a gun. Don't you have another place outside this sporting house where someone can talk? Gymnasium, please. Gymnasium. Of course. Come this way. Soundproof. Yes. Take a seat. I haven't seen you for two years. But I kept track of everything that was going on. You always were, um... Nosey Parker. Yeah. You've been a boxer, actor, singer, smuggler, gambler. <laughs> and now you're teaching women how to shoot. <laughs> Disgusting. Damn violin gives me a headache. I see that you're limping. Yeah. Did you come here to learn how to return the compliment? Ask your cigar if I need any lessons, you fraud, you. <laughs> There's a bullet in my leg. But it's still good enough to give you a kick. Right in the teeth. <laughs> what can I do for you, Uncle? If you've come here after two years, you must want something. Now you listen to me, Sugar Colt. Mm -mm. Tom Cooper. Well, three years ago, with that name, you were famous as an agent in the Washington Intelligence Bureau. The best shot. The best agent in all the United States. That's water under the bridge. You see? If that's all, I've thought of a way for you to get rid of that dust from your pistols. Listen, a year ago, maybe you read it in the newspapers. About a hundred of our sharpshooters disappeared. Remember? Yes, I remember. There was an inquiry or something at that time. Yes, there was. But they never came to any conclusion. A search was made. Here. Around Alamogordo. 
the town towards which the battalion was marching. But that battalion never reached Alamogordo. Obviously. If it just disappeared. What I mean is that the man who directed the inquiry, a certain Colonel Haverbrook, took things too lightly. Look, as you can see here, there's a fork in the trail from the south before it reaches Alamogordo. The trail going off to the left leads to a small town called Snake Valley. I get it. The way you see it, soldiers went to Snake Valley instead of uh, Alamogordo, right? Right. Now, if the inquiry was to be reopened and... Whoa, wait a minute. Aside from the fact that the soldiers never went to Snake Valley, you've got to tell me first, why would they have taken the long route home after they had been at war for three years, huh? Second, why should we refute the findings of the inquiry, according to which the soldiers either deserted or were killed by the Indians? And of course, that's why no one found them. Third, I don't know why you should come and bother me with all this. Three days ago, I received this letter. It's from a friend of mine. I grew up with him back in Hartford. Edgar Preston. He's the father of one of the officers who disappeared. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. Getting a man to believe his son is still alive, then requesting a $10,000 ransom for his return. Mm-hmm. It looks like a swindle to me. You think he's still alive? He might be. Of course he might be. But in this case, I'd put my money right on the table. Just like you do in poker. But this is not poker. A man's life is at stake, and maybe that of many others. What others? Don't you understand that if Preston is still alive, the rest of the battalion might be too? It would mean that other families have been written to and that the disappearance of those soldiers was nothing but a colossal organized fraud. Easy, 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 Uncle. Get hold of yourself. You're letting your imagination run away with you. Before long, you're going to believe that General Grant is involved in this. Ah, you're right, Tom. You've changed too much. Not even the shadow of sugar cold is left in you. Nope. Not even a shadow. But you got to understand. I'm making a pot of money. I've got the most beautiful girls in the world. You turned out soft. How stupid of me to try to convince you. Well, I won't bother you anymore. I'll have Preston come to my new office tomorrow at noon. I'd written in that you'd take care of this business. But I guess I'll have to handle it alone. Even if I do have a game leg. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> come on. Why don't you wait? Why don't we have a drink? Talk it over. It's been a long time since we've seen each other. No, thanks. If you want to talk to me, you can come to the office at noon tomorrow. Otherwise, you'll never see me again. Of course, my husband said that again. Mine is too. <laughs> you should just hear the language mine uses. Oh, hello there, Mrs. Julie. Cooper. Good afternoon. Just fine. Just fine. Good, I see. It's ah, warm. You're looking well. Thank you. I need lots more lessons, don't I? Goodbye, Preston. Take care, will you? And follow my instructions. I'm a terrible no, no, shot, no. and I can't even aim a rifle. It's true. <laughs> I'll follow your instructions to the letter, but you must be yes. informed. All right, so We don't can't worry. afford to take any chances. I've taken all the necessary precautions. <laughs>
Let's shoot. Hey, you. Me? Come over here. Good afternoon. Didn't you read the sign? Huh? What sign? The one over there. Oh, I guess I didn't see... Hey. No. <laughs> Go on. Get inside. Against the wall. Go on, search him. No pistols. But he must be some kind of swindler. He's got money, lots of it. I'm sorry, but I'm a doctor. I... Oh, I say that you're a thief or a swindler. And even if you are a doctor, you better head back where you come from and back. Understand? There's real help around. And we don't have no need of you doctors. Sorry, but I must have... You mustn't do anything but leave, you hear? You was trying to save yourself the 25 cent toll fee. So now you're going to have to pay the fine. Mikey, come here. Jed, you too. Yes, sir. Hello, Colonel. What's gotten into you men, anyhow? I'm surprised at seeing you treat a stranger like that. Excuse me. Why were you beating him? He looked suspicious, Colonel. And he didn't want to pay the toll. I am Colonel Haverbrook. Oh, my name is Tom Cooper. I'm a doctor. I, I really didn't see that sign. Of course you didn't. Were you on your way to Snake Valley? Well, yes and no. You see, I'm making the rounds of the villages, and, well, I sort of go where I'm needed. As for you two, I hope you're sorry. A doctor ought to be respected. I regret what they've done to you. Thank you. Oh, uh, he took my money. Thank you. I'm glad I was able to meet you, Doctor. Thank you. Oh. Right is right. Oh, by the way, you two have a plan to come to Snake Valley? We're going tonight. Why? Mm-hmm. I was just wondering. Idiot. <laughs> 
Tom Cooper, pupil of the illustrious Professor Carl Sammy. <laughs> will cure all sicknesses, internal and external, with filters that are made from herbs, with bloodlet, and as well as all sorts of hot coats. Reasonable fees. <laughs> Your type's difficult to find, amigo. Look at my tongue. <laughs> It would lead me to believe you have a dung heap in your stomach. Good for you, Doc. Now try the others. Doc, my head's like a punch signal. Hey! Stop! Give him a second. So am I. Stop! Over this way! They kind of gave it to me. Have a brandy. You'll feel better. Thank you very much. Have you a room here? Yes. We could get your place free, if you like, up at the cemetery, Doctor. Uh, you got one for me, can't you? More than one. And we let you sleep as late as you want. I thought you could talk sensible, Calhoun. <laughs> How do you like that, huh? Now the cemetery steals our guests. Josephine! Hmm. Yes? Take the doctor to a room on the oh. second floor. Thank you. Doc. <laughs> There's someone who won't like this at all, Bess. I ain't frightened. You shouldn't interfere in my hotel. You like that, Doc? And now I guess you're thinking of taking us away, eh? You're missing a brain. That's all that's wrong with you, Calhoun. Why don't you get one? <laughs> this is your room. Anything else you wish, sir? Wait a minute. Let me see your tongue. Bah. You have a lovely mouth. Keep your place, doctor. I oh, hope that's near you. You're a coward. I saw you down there. Coward? I assure you, you're mistaken. I'm a very courageous man. Then why didn't you show them your courage downstairs? That reminds me, I've forgotten something. Excuse me. Clear of that one. Hey, look! Hey, it's the doctor in his underwear. Maybe he's going to sleep. He's a little crazy. That's what's wrong. Hey, welcome. That's <laughs> Doc. Look at him. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, excuse me. I seem to remember that I used to do a little bit of boxing. And if it isn't too much trouble, and with the lady's kind permission. He's much crazier than I thought. I'd like to give you all a little exhibition. No. I mean it. Want to try with us? Ain't you cold, Doc? Why not? Who wants to start? <laughs> it's the <a> doctor. <laughs> well, which one of us are you going to lick first? <laughs> Why not the boat? I think that'll be quicker. Yeah, quicker than putting you out of your misery, Doc. <laughs> Doc, you want me to straighten your tie? <laughs> Get him, Doc. <laughs>
Richard, huh? Get him, Jack. enjoyed this little exhibition. I want to make it quite clear. I meant no offense to these two, uh, gentlemen. Uh. It was merely an exhibition in, uh, scientific boxing. Good night. like surprise visits at this hour, Mr. Younger. They usually mean bad news. There's a certain person who doesn't like strangers. You know who I mean. Particularly inquisitive strangers. He's that one who came and away. Where'd he come from? I don't know and I care less. I just want to stay out of all this. I don't want no trouble here. Come on, Bess. You can tell me. I told you, Mr. Younger. I don't know. I don't ask guests their life history. He says he's a doctor. He put a sign up saying, say it. Why don't you go and look at him? He may be what he says he is, but to prove he is, well, maybe come here to try and make trouble. What do we do then? Any trouble you get into, you'll owe it to yourself. It's a great mistake you're letting him have a room here without sending word to me about it. Let me give you a message to repeat to the man who sent you. It's that I don't take orders from anyone. I think he'll have something to say about that. Then let him come and say it to me personally. Maybe he will. But remember one thing. You and that niece of yours are to keep your mouths tight shut. Because you don't want real trouble. Ah! Let, let me go! Don't! You're hurting me! Let me go! Let me go! <laughs> What are you doing in here? Well, you see, I, uh, well, that is, I, uh, I can explain actually. Get out I, of uh, here. Take your things, pay what you owe me, and get out, Cooper. Now, listen, Miss Bess, uh, well, there seems to be a little misunderstanding, you see. I guess I got the rooms mixed up. And the bed as well, hmm? Guess I did. He heard what you and that man were saying. He was listening. Yes, over there at the door. Not so loud. He didn't try to, to attack you or anything, did he? No. But he was kissing you. He was trying to. I hated it. There's no need to exaggerate. It was legitimate defense. Uh, she started to cry and I... I had to stop her. All right, come along. And you, cover yourself up at once. In my room. Shut the door. Now, don't lie to me. Who are you? Hmm. A doctor. Hmm. I guess no one believes me. But you're not a doctor. You're here as a spy. Is there anything to spy on in Snake Valley?
All right, then. Let's say you're a doctor. And you're here only to do your medical work. If that's true, you can stay on in town. But I'm warning you, you'll starve. You won't get a lot of patients. Keep your eyes off of Josephine. And I mean what I say. The first person I'd want to put my eyes on, if I were permitted to, would be you. Well, my goodness. You have imagination, don't you? May I please continue? In case you're a spy and you're not a doctor, as you've said, you better be leaving town. I don't want any trouble. I want to keep my saloon. So don't expect me to help you. Hmm. If you want my advice, and it won't cost you a cent, get out of here. In this town, a stranger is generally buried before he has a chance to catch his breath. So be careful. Good night, Miss Bess. I want that doctor to come to my house. You want to die quick, don't you? Morning. Good morning, doctor. How are you? Are there four calls there that you have to make? Mm -hmm. May the Lord be praised. I think, Miss Best, they're beginning to have faith in me. Don't build up your hopes on those. If you ask me, they want some free advice on their rheumatiz, and that's all they want. Bill Everett, Bert White, Jack Rogers, Frank Evans. Hmm. Good day. Good luck. Uh, who was that last night? It was younger, wasn't it? Younger? Never heard of him. Hello there, Doc. <laughs> the boys and I are glad to see you're looking so healthy. Morning, Sheriff. Are you making your calls? That's right. You know something? I've always wanted to watch a doctor when he's visiting a patient. Have you never called a doctor? <laughs> never in my life. What would you say if uh, I went along with you to satisfy my curiosity, huh? Hmm. I don't know if my patients would like that. Ah, don't worry. There ain't no one here and say I ain't welcome. Uh, who are your patients? Well, let's see. We have Rogers. We have White. Clayton. And... Evans. Good. Well, then we can begin with Evans. He lives over there. Hmm? All right. Well, if it is our old friend, the Undertaker. I'm sorry, but now poor Evans only has need of my services, Dr. Cooper. He died very suddenly, a half hour ago. I can see you don't exactly bring your patients good luck, eh, Doc? I guess he'll want you to take a look at his wife. Poor Mrs. Clayton, she's more dead than alive. Well, we'll see. Oh, Hello, doctor. Mr. Clayton. Excuse me, I'm sorry to have disturbed you. It was for my wife. Well, uh, she's a lot better now. Thank you anyway for coming. <laughs> Peculiar. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> People in this town are all a bit loony, I guess. They call a doctor and then they die or they don't want to see him. <laughs> Would you take advice from a friend? If it's good, it is for you. I wouldn't bother visiting the others. Exactly the same thing will happen. Are you quite sure, Sheriff? Dead sure of it, Cooper. Well, in that case, that's better. <laughs> Do you think you're ever going to have any success in this town, Doc? In time. And with a lot of patience, Sheriff. 
Good morning. Don't start that again. I mean it this time. You're as white as a sheet. And your eyes. Huh. What's the matter with my eyes? They're beautiful. Oh, that's enough. I've got work to do. Uh, they're too bright for my liking. There. Try one of these pills I have. Hmm. Swallow it. Be a good girl and swallow it. You'll thank me after. What was that you gave Josephine? You wouldn't hesitate at nothing, would you? <laughs> Just a pill. A pill against the smoke. <laughs> There's too much smoke in it. It's bad for the heart. There's one here for you, too. I don't believe a word. But I want to see what it does. that strange odor. What are you asking for? You ain't washed for a year. <sighs> got five queens. So we lose. You lick this with two. Good. <laughs> that means that I won. Ha, 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 ha. 
The pill I gave you. <laughs> I spit it out. Someone's playing the bugle. Who can it be? They're looking for us. We can't just sit around here and wait, Lieutenant. Sounds we gotta close. do something. We've gotta think of a way to let them know that we're here. They'll never find us. They'll give up and go away. We want out! Let us out of here! Let us out of here! Come on, here we are! Don't go away! Well, well. So our young heroes have been wakened by a sound that has raised their hopes. I thought you had more common sense than that. In case you're cherishing any delusions because somebody's been tooting a bugle somewhere, you're going to have to forget them and face the fact that not one of you is leaving this place until it is in my interest that he do so. As far as the outside world is concerned, you must consider yourselves dead. Only the money I am asking for you can bring you back to life. Who is Philip Hathaway? I have news from your family, son. They say your father's gambling is running badly into debt. Is there someone else who you think could pay your ransom? I'm asking $10,000. No, my life isn't worth that much.
Sammy? Good gracious, boss. Whatever happened to you? Poker, that's what it was. Four jacks, just like that time in San Francisco. Forget it now. The guy was after me, Sammy. Followed me right up the river. The water was cold enough to freeze your... Oh! Damn it! You find anything? Nothing. I came all the way up the fork from Alamogordo along the trail without finding the slightest trace of an accident. Give me some of that coffee, huh? How did the bugle work? Huh? Perfect. <laughs> mm. Now listen. There must be some place where a mine was exploded. We gotta find it. But where? Where? I don't know. Look for it. Now listen. Go back to the fork. Keep your eyes peeled, step by step. Step by step. That's a tall order. I'll never make it. But we've gotta find the place. Even if it's 20 miles. I'll try to. If I find anything, how will I let you know? Use the bugle. Two long notes, like last night, remember. All right. Two long notes. I got you. Hey, bingo. Digging for clams? Looks like someone wants a doctor. Hmm. Uh, where, uh, Miss Bess, where could I find, uh, Mr. Forrester? He lives near the cemetery. Oh, hmm. Sounds like a nice quiet spot. See you. So long. Here I am. You miss me? Cheeky fellows like you make me sick. <laughs> Judging by the way you acted last night, I wouldn't believe it. Well, your aunt had to slap you to stop you from leaping at me, right in front of everybody. I think you're in love with me. You get any closer and I'll show you. I'm sorry, I'm busy now. Oh, Doctor. Yes? You're the only one who can help us here. Hmm. You mustn't go out to the Forrester place. Hmm. Thanks, anyway. This town has a curse on it. Listen, Agony. Maybe you can help me. I've been wanting to talk to you. Where? I'm sorry, I can't now. I'm going to be late at the saloon. Uh, Something's the matter, Josephine. What is it? The matter? What is it? Why, there's nothing. Come over here. For you. Let's wish him luck. I'm in. Yeah. 
sounds like hunters. They must have plugged a wild rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Agony, play something. A funeral march, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> Undertaker, I found a couple of bodies near Forrester's that I thought might interest you. So you're younger. It's obvious it wasn't you. You've been sitting here all the time, right? And you only shoot people unexpectedly. And people that talk too much. Isn't that right? Good night. Hold on, Doc. Listen. You got ten minutes to get upstairs to your room, pack your bag, and take the road heading out of Snake Valley. Do you understand? Hmm. Why should I do that? Because we don't like that face of yours. Hmm. Well. So you really want Tom Cooper, the doctor, to leave Snake Valley? All right. As you can see, Tom Cooper, the doctor, is left. But Sugar Cult has arrived. Almost forgot. Good night, Miss Bess. I'll be upstairs, if anybody wants me. Quiet now. <laughs> Quiet. Here we are. Here's our friend. <laughs> Get up, Agony. You're coming with us. All right. Get dressed. That's Agony's dog. I hear it. Better start talking fast. What'd you tell him? Talk. Go on. He's just being stubborn. 
But I didn't say nothing. I don't believe you. You're lying. Finish with him. Come on, Agony, what you tell him? Talk! No, no. Who's that? So you let him find out who you were. That is all you've accomplished. You wanted to find out who was helping him, and he made fools of you. So we still haven't discovered whether he works alone or with others. Now we know who he really is. You've also made the mistake of trying to kill him and lost some of your best men in the process. What are you, imbeciles? Killing Colt is worse than idiotic. It's dangerous. We have to find out who it is that employs him. In the future, you will refrain from taking any action unless I order it. I mean that. Wait, Josephine. We should stay out of things like this. He's going to the cemetery with agony. Has it gone this far? that we can't mourn for a good man. You're looking well, Doctor. The air here does some folks good. Yes. But not everybody. So I hear. 
I've been told about the death of this man. Ah, living in this place is difficult. You're right. It's even more difficult to gather a few people together to follow the funeral of an honest man. That may be the case, but let's hope that seeing my example, a number of the less courageous will follow. I hope so. I think it's important to tell the good people from the bad, the honest, from the thieves. All right, folks. Let's go to the cemetery with the body of our friend here. A lot of folk around here think that a ghost is playing that bugle. Do you agree with them? I don't know. But I prefer to think about men. Men who are living. Well, of course. You're a doctor. Tell me, why did you choose to come and work in our town? Was there a special reason? Why don't we find a more comfortable place for a talk? For example, why not the ranch? You think that would solve anything? Hmm. When two sensible men come to an agreement, that's of some value, isn't it? Agreement about what? Ghosts? Perhaps, who knows? But we could also agree as to how you're wasting your time in this place. A man like you with such splendid capabilities should be working in a big city that can uh, appreciate his talents. You mean a long way from here? No, don't misunderstand me. I am sure that you can help me and I can be of value to you. Sending work to you, doctor, for which you'll be well paid. How well paid. Enough to help you to grow old without having any worries and without the fear of unforeseen accidents. Interesting. Glad you think so. You'll pay me a visit? You're really a good for nothing, aren't you? First you came and posed as an eccentric doctor and caused nothing but trouble. Then you became sugar cold. And you caused more trouble. Agony's dead because of you. So now you're going away. Come here, little girl. I wish you were dead. Don't you touch me. I know why you're going. All right. You tell me why. Because you've made a deal with Haverbrook. Be quiet, Josephine. It's better that sugar cults go in. Why? Tell me what's going on instead of trying to hush me up. Why get upset? There's nothing you don't know about. Sammy.
He's too sharp for his own good. The colonel wants him alive. All right, now, get up. Your black friend knew too much, so we had to dispose of him. He was too curious. Certain dead bodies should be left in peace. Has he got another gun on him, Simon? I told you not to shoot. Just be careful with him. He's the colonel's prisoner.
hoping I'd end up in your bed. You almost ended up in the cemetery. Well, I better get out of here, or I'll get you in trouble. No. Stay right where you are. You'll be safe there. It's Haverbrook, isn't it? That's who it is. But don't you worry. I'll manage things. Honey, listen. My throat is a little dry. Could I have some, uh, whiskey? Yes, but lie down now. Uh-huh. I'd like to hear news of this sugar cult. Uh, isn't he one of your guests here? He was, but I haven't seen him around at all today. Bess, tell me why you're acting this way. Are you forgetting that I gave you this hotel to run because you were sensible and honest? No. I was given the hotel because you were interested in me and because I kept your shady deals to myself. And now it's mine. Unless you're putting an end to our little arrangement. That depends on you. On me? Don't forget there's another person who knows your secret. What are you going to do now about those poor soldiers you've got locked up? You'll have to free them all. Are you insane, woman? I'd kill them first. As I'll kill you if I find you're still helping that miserable spy, Sugar Colt. Come in. Look for him upstairs, all of you. That's right out here. No! Don't go there, that's my room. Who's that bottle for? No! Why don't you look under the bed? Let's go. We didn't get him, but we got his girl. He was in our room before he left. Now you listen, Bess. I'm taking Josephine with me to the ranch. If you should happen to meet our friend Sugar Colt, remind him of our appointment there. The rest of you, look around for him in town. He was in bad shape. He can't have gotten far. You snake. You'd better start praying real hard that I get my hands on that sugar cult. If I don't, the two of you will suffer. First her, and then you. Now your viciousness has gone too far. Instead of threatening me, Bess, think of the trouble you're in. Goodbye. No luck. We looked all over town for him. We went through every house. There's no trace of him. Quick to the ranch.
Line up for your food. Sure, you're tied up good and tight. Now look, I think we can make it out of here if you listen very carefully to what I have to say. First, I want you all to get together and make some noise. Okay, now boys, all come together. On, come on, together. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Anybody make a move. I've got to find a possible way for us to get off this ranch. The most important thing is to wait till I give the order. Okay? Yeah. We will. We've got to kill the prisoners quick and hide their bodies. Sugar coats around. Colonel, one of our guards has been killed. He's here now. Lock the gate. Quick, man. Set up the machine gun. <laughs> Let's keep quiet. We've got to wait here. Wait no more. Me neither. You can trap us down here. I'm getting out. Let's all go, huh? All right, come, come on. on. Come on, let's go. Let's set it so that you're aiming at that door over there.
stronger.
Bess! Bess! Bess, help me! Bess! No! some for me too. I'm thirsty. Why don't you go to the bar over there? Sugar gold. <laughs> 